Oh, yeah, man. so for anyone who needs context listening to this, Ryan ripped apart scene, basically the first scene of the film, thinking, I think AF stands for After Frieza. And when I heard that, I was like, how does this man know this? Because the way I composited the film to really make it look like an 80s or 90s film, it absolutely is blurry. There's chromatic aberrations, there's all sorts of stuff happening. So if you look at the statue that, of Emperor Vegeta on the neck of something, that, that, that something is Frieza begging for his life. So the fact that he put that together, like without even being able to see the statue properly, like I don't get it. <laughs> like, yeah, it makes sense. It wasn't it was... even the statue that that I saw initially. I was just AF. Like, like at first I th- I thought it was a nod to after. Oh no, uh, after future. That's what I initially mm-hmm. thought. And then I was like, wait a minute. After Frieza. And then when yo when I said it to him, ooh. That was our clip for the week that I shared for the episode. Like, his reaction was so priceless because... Bro, you literally see me, like, putting, like, every single... <laughs> I'm like, like, when you said that, everything started connecting. I was like, oh, shit. At first, like, his reaction, like, it wasn't even, like, instant. Like, I said what I said. I said, AF, after Frieza. Just like that, right? Delay effect. <laughs> it was a whole, like, one Mississippi, two Mississippi. And then you see his face, and he goes... And then I keep talking, I'm talking, I zoom the camera in on him. And he's just like, after, pre- I'm like, after, and then as soon as he went like this with his hands, I was like, we got him, we got him. <laughs> he's in. That That's definitely the time when I was in, because after I heard that, I was like, nah, I clearly missed way too much. I need to run this back a lot of times. And I did. Yeah. <laughs> I really did. Nice, I appreciate it, man. So yeah, no, no, seriously, that... It, it's the first time we've been delivered a whole package in a very long time. And I I have not thought about the whole um, appeasing the child mind versus the adult mind when it comes to Dragon Ball as writing. So I really like the way you put that because it was well spoken and it was 100% accurate. Mm-hmm. And I, I totally agree with it. Now, I feel like that this is the part where I was saying I speak for all three of us um, at FPP here where we definitely want our adult minds appeased. We definitely want that intricate storyline. We want these crazy twists and turns. Like, yeah, we want the whole package. Now, yeah. Dragon Ball, I don't even... It's an empty box right now. Like, that, I don't even know if that... <laughs> like, Super, Super's been dropping the Dragon Ball, okay? Like, all seven I mean, of them. All seven of them. <laughs> so, so, for something like, you know, for something as as well constructed as this to come out especially during such you know you know a time where we're fiending for something good to talk about it was just it was really a blessing in disguise i I really i really can't thank you enough it's it's an honor seriously it was crazy and and i have to say the other thing that i knew off rip that i absolutely loved about it the one thing that stood out the absolute most to me i don't know whose decision it was but the idea what what i'm gonna call the super saiyan flicker when that shit turns on and off, I was uh, I was out of my chair every time. From the very first time I saw it, I was like, oh, oh, I was like, who did this? Whose idea was this? <laughs> yeah. Um, like, that is, that's yeah, the that's best. that's definitely my idea. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was in that yeah, uh, situation, that's probably what would be happening to me. So, like, to give you an idea, like, some people have commented, like, um, each Super Saiyan has a different form of fighting. Like, Vegeta... He's like really close to the ground and really quick. Uh, mm. Goku is much more like feral and wild. And Broly is 300 pounds heavier than everyone. You know what I mean? So the way I see it is like Vegeta's only mission is to not get touched by Broly. It's like a glass cannon. Like if he touches him, he's dead. And he does touch him only once and he breaks all his ribs. <laughs> so, and then he strangles him. He almost strangles him to death just because he got close enough. So Vegeta's always trying to get away from him. So, um,. The fact that he goes like he's that close and he's actually taking punches to the face, he's definitely gonna be almost knocked out every time. <laughs> now the the way the way that was animated, I'm I'm curious. Did you um did you draw inspiration from things like Mortal Kombat's like fatalities or stuff like that, where you see like these really you know like gruesome scenes? No, because uh, the thing is though, I I know what you're talking about because I only played the newer Mortal Kombat's like maybe once. It was it was a little while ago. Um, it was sometime after I already started coming up with the idea of legend and like, you know, I get accredited for a lot of things that I didn't even realize I did. 
So, for example, <laughs> I, I hope this doesn't make me sound like an accidental creator, but it's not an accident, and I'll tell you why. So, for example, you see the scene where Goku turns into his monkey form, and everyone says, oh, so nod back to the original Krillin sequence with Goku. Like, uh, absolutely is, but I never even looked at the sequence. I remember it so viscerally, every single thing about it. I know what screen direction Goku was looking at. I know where the lightning was coming from. I know his head had to bob up in profile. I knew what he did when he screamed. I knew the wide shot on back and the pan up and everything and the turn to Frieza. All of it's in my, it's ingrained in my DNA. I didn't even have to look back at it. There's other scenes that accidentally happen where like Broly is getting punched against a pillar and there's this huge crater in it. And my friend Mike, who is the color director on it, he's like, Oh, was this a nod to when he, Broly does it to Vegeta in the first Broly movie? I'm like, no, but it is now. And of course it right. is. And of course it's on purpose <laughs> by accident. Fun. Because why would I ever forget something like that, you know? It's in every stroke of my pencil. Like, I have to, it, it's going to come out. Broly dies at the end. Some people are equating that. Isn't that how Broly dies in the first movie? I'm like, I remembered Cell dying like that against Gohan. And his face gets all contorted and stuff. That was my inspiration, but I never even looked at the scene. And I should have. Like, there's no reason why I shouldn't have. I should have looked at it for the color design. I should have looked at it for, like, how they're animating, how long they held this. And I didn't do a single one of those things because it's just ingrained in my mind so heavily. Um, wow. But, yeah, this is, this, is how, like, this is the effect that good animation has on people. That, that scene where Vegeta leaves right at the beginning and he, he, bla- he brushes his cape back. Someone long time ago, I remember laughing so hard when I read this comment. Um, he's like, did this man trace Yu-Gi-Oh? And I'm like, because that's how Atem leaves I thought that in the too. last episode, I thought episode, that right? too. When I, the first time I watched that, I thought it was a nod to Atem. Wow. And it wasn't. But of course it was. That was my favorite scene was. in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. How could that not make it into my work? But I didn't even look at the scene. I didn't look how it was oh, timed. Yeah. I didn't look how it was fielded. I didn't look at any of that. And it'll, it'll, it'll show in the work. I did look up one single thing. It was the reference to the Budokai tournament where Chi-Chi's like, you said you were going to marry me. So, like, I'm like, oh, I want to make that. That's how I'm going to start this movie. I'm like, I'm going to make that scene. And it's going to be revolving around that. But I didn't even look at how the scene was choreographed. I mean, I, I looked at it to just watch the scene, but I didn't study it. I didn't, like, find their shot choices. I didn't do anything. I just, I like what it sounded like. I like what was happening. And I'm like, okay, just go figure it out yourself. So, um, yeah, I'll get credited for a lot of references that are by total accident. But they're not really accidents because that's what the effect of like, these movies have on you. Yeah. watching them since i was in grade three do you know what i mean <laughs> dude that is so that's awesome just to hear that oh my god like uh, by the way the, the 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 choice of using goku versus chi chi from that tournament was such an interesting way to start the story because i could tell you right now that i had to go back and watch that episode of dragon ball and I believe, and I, and I, it was like 137, I think I said, mm-hmm. and the fight is clearly like this, this, your version is just, that is the, that is, that is a great version. I'll tell you that much because the, in the original, they, it's more of a conversation than anything else. And then the second Goku's like, wait a minute. So if I beat you, you'll tell me who you are. And she was like, yeah. So then he air punches her. He doesn't even touch her. Yeah. <laughs> right? And so here comes your version. And it's a whole... It's all choreographed. A whole ass fight. And they're having the conversation while they're fighting. The, like, the thing is, I remembered it that they were having it while they fought. I guess I remembered it wrong. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, it felt like a fight, though, didn't it? Like, it felt like they were fighting the whole time. And they're just arguing. Yeah. So. That's, the, that's the power of Chi-Chi, no. bro. Oh, that's that... Good shit!